go. Good evening and welcome to Fleece TV this absolutely barking mad Friday evening. Um, I'm just call, um, calling in to do our show in between pizza deliveries. Um, but uh, yesterday was Shakespeare's birthday and we thought, as we were all asparagus uh, focused predominantly yesterday, we'd talk just a little bit about Shakespeare's birthday. So um, in a short while, uh, I've got, um, we've got an interview between myself and our friend and local uh, Louisa Davis, who lives just down the road. And um, so, um, and here's a picture of the of the uh, the old fellow himself. Look, this hangs in the fleece inn. Who said we've got no culture? So yeah. And uh, uh, here's just a few, one or two Shakespeare quotes um, for you. Um, well, for instance, a man cannot make him laugh, but that's no marvel. He drinks no wine. See what I mean? Get yourself a drink of wine or beer, in fact, yeah. And uh, I pray you, do not fall in love with me, for I am falser than bows made in wine. Uh, as you like it, Act Three, Scene Five. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to clip, uh, go and look at a little clip sent through uh, by one of our home correspondents, Helen Davis, who is going to um, tell us about her, the, her and Rob's allotment here in the village. Here we are at the allotments. Lovely morning. We'll have a look what's been happening. This is our new shed we have, which we keep the mower and the rotavator in within guidelines. So we've got hand sanitizer and kitchen towels in there to wipe the, the handle and everything after we've used it. This is the school plot which unfortunately hasn't had anything happen to it but it is covered so the weed should be suppressed. And now we we'll just walk up the path to our plot. We've got some onion sets to try and plant today and some of the seedlings we've put in will need watering and rhubarb to harvest. So we'll find plenty to do in our hours activity. So there's some garlic planted quite a bit of garlic in the autumn which is growing quite well and here I've got some cauliflowers but they haven't really come to much some spinach some uh, rainbow chard which we use as spinach and shallots and garlic and here importantly we have our little asparagus bed and I don't know if anything is coming up there. Have we got anything there, Rob? Oh, good here's, chunky one here, no? here's a couple, a couple of shoots we might have. Big fat one there. Here's another one. This is just the first year we've been able to cut. It's just been in three years. So that's exciting. And we've got rhub rhubarb, plenty of rhubarb, which will be nice. Have some of that. Potatoes are all coming through. And here's my owl, which is supposed to keep the pigeons from eating everything. And that's about all that's happening at the moment. We've got some blossom on our little fruit trees, but we won't be getting any fruit off that yet and we're all it's all been dug and ready to get on with the this summer's salad crops and vegetables for next winter oh i have planted some turnip and swede and parsnips there 
and we've got a few strawberry plants. These are alpine strawberries mostly, I'm in the too much shade, shadow. So strawberries, hopefully, herbs. This is our workstation, more strawberries. And that's about it. Welcome back. And I've had a couple of comments in. Uh, Jan uh, says, uh, Hi Nigel, I think you look a bit like the Bard. Some would say, I think like I, sh I should be, I think I sh look like I should be Bard. <laughs> Blimey O'Reilly. And um, uh, Sarah, Sarah says, Friday night, whiskey night. You could be right. <laughs> we'll see how that one goes. Um, we've um, we asked yesterday for asparagus recipes and we had quite a few in and I just want one that really jumped out at me was asparagus con del salsas, dos salsas, that was really good, I'll tell you my um, Spanish um, uh, is amazing uh, and that's from uh, uh, Wayne Marshall, thanks Wayne, but it's basically asparagus served with a ham and two sauces, two sauces, not one, two ham and parsley and almond and sweet sherry and that's going to go out um, on uh, our uh, Facebook website Malarkey um, for you to have a look at along with some others and don't forget on Sunday it's the 2.6 challenge there are no there's no marathon being run in London this year so the 2.6 challenge is across the country to raise money um, we're raising money for uh, breast cancer haven at Worcester um, and the way that we're going to do this is to ask you guys the gauntlet laid down to eat the uh, 226 spears of asparagus in the fastest time possible. So uh, get your uh, get your asparagus down your necks and get it videoed and send it over to us for the for the, uh, the and then you could be the king or the queen of asparagus. Amazing. So um, so that's that. Mm? The what? It's a lot of asparagus. That is a lot of asparagus. 26 spears. I appreciate that. We might say 13. But for the moment, we're on 26. Right, any, um, oh, I've, I've had a green heart from someone. That's nice. Um, and uh, what else we got on here? So, um, a little more Shakespeare before we do our second piece, um, uh, which, oh no, let's move on to our friends, uh, Spike and Pam in Wales, who are going to send us, have sent us a little mignon of life in Wales today, one of our home correspondents. Hello lovely fleeces, it's your Welsh correspondent again. Um, the weather's more back to normal in that it's quite grey out here, but notwithstanding that we decided tonight was a barbecue night. So here we go, the only way to cook asparagus. Sadly not Vale asparagus, only Kentish, but there we go. And because it's Friday, it's also Prosecco night. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. Bye! Asparagus and Prosecco. Mm. You're back. I'm back. Hello. Welcome to uh, Welcome Back to Police in TV with me and the telephone ringing in the background. Um, we've had lots of interesting things happen to us. Um, today uh, a delivery lorry came while I was doing my interview with uh, Louisa and making a beeping noise. That was good yesterday. Uh, an officer of law, etc. But anyway, let's moving on. Here's a little bit more Shakespeare. Good wine is a is good wine is a good familiar creature if it be well used. Tello, tello, and this one I love this one. Uh, this is from the Scottish play, which says, "Drink, sir, is a great provoker of three things: nose painting, sleep, and urine." Lechery, sir, it provokes and unprovokes. It provokes the desire, but takes away the performance. So there we go. So I think, given it's um, uh, Shakespeare's birthday, you've probably suffered enough quotes from me. Uh, but we're going to speak with um, uh, with Louisa now uh, a little bit about her time with the RSC and other things. And uh, being my... Uh, what? The villages. Shakespeare's Villages. Uh, Shakespeare's Villages, is that here? It's on the very small text, I don't know. Hmm. Oh, that's a shame. I wonder what we've done with that. 
Never mind. We'll do that tomorrow because I really like that. Drunken Bidford. A uh, piping Pebworth. Um, yeah, so here we go uh, with uh, our list. Uh, I may not be here to say goodbye. I hope you don't mind uh, at the end of this because I'll be out in my pizza mobile. Um, obviously, this is low alcohol law list that I'm drinking. Um, but um, yeah, but uh, enjoy this uh, this lovely chat I had with Louisa earlier about uh, about the RSC and a few other things. Hello, and uh, I've been joined today uh, by Louisa Davies Foley, who is a good friend of, of ours at the Fleece, a regular at the Fleece, a Morris dancer and folk musician, and also long time and I believe a childhood friend of uh, of Tash. So. Um, hi, hi, Louise. Nice, nice, hi. Of you, uh, nice of you to join us this afternoon um, from the comfort of your um, uh, uh, office environment. There. <laughs> so, yes, yeah. It's, it's nice to see you. It's nice to see yeah. you over the uh, over the interweb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, so uh, we, we yesterday was Shakespeare's birthday, and um, I just thought it would be a good idea to have a chat with yourself because you were heavily involved in a 400 year anniversary celebrations, weren't you, at the RSC uh, when you were Yes. Working. I wonder if you could just tell us maybe a little bit about that, what, what went on, what sort of things happened. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. This morning I woke up and looked at my Facebook memories and uh, the first thing that came up was um, this uh, post that I'd uh, put on um, Facebook four years ago at some early hours in the morning of the 24th of April. And it said, um, today has been amazing, I'll never forget it. Um, and it was the most incredible day. So it was the 400th anniversary of his death, which landed um, on his birthday or the day that we're pretty sure he was born on. So just to be clear, Shakespeare's birthday was never really recorded, but oh. his, um, his his baptism was recorded. And, it, and in those days, or his, you know, the registration of his birth was recorded. So we don't actually know which day he was born on, but it's usually a couple of days between in those times a baby being born and the, and the birth being recorded. So it's always been supposed to be the 23rd of April. Uh, but yeah, he also died on the 23rd of April. Yeah. Um, and the thinking is that, yeah, maybe he'd gone out drinking with some mates and like, you know, fallen asleep under a tree or something, you know, that, that's, that's various stories around. Um, and yeah, at the time I was working for the Royal Shakespeare Company um, in Stratford and I was kind of involved in running um, events and activities um, and projects that happened off stage um, that weren't the performances of the plays but were things that happened around it. So the, the Shakespeare's birthday was always a big focus of, of that work. And in that year we did some incredible things really. Um, the most incredible thing we did was that um, we looked after the fireworks display that happened um, at the close of the um, live broadcast, the Royal Shakespeare Company did on BBC Two. They had this like two and a half hour long show that they did. And wow. at the end of the show, it cut to the outside and we had this fireworks display. And the centerpiece of that was the, there was the burning uh, face of Shakespeare in front of the theatre. And then, the, and then the fireworks were timed to music that was being played live inside the theatre. So we had various complicated different things to manage and um, it was about 10,000 people watching in in Stratford and then of course millions of people on television and in cinemas um, seeing this this moment this and it was five minutes you know but it, the, the amount of work that went into making it perfect um, was was immense and it was in incredible and then during the day we had this fantastic like acrobatic show um, kind of picking out little bits of Shakespeare some moments that are really more physical in Shakespeare that that you know that usually you know you have the text but actually, if you if you take the text away, you know, what's the physicality of those moments? So it was a kind of acrobatic show with like the witches and the kings um, and the fairies and all these different kind of characters from across all the different plays coming together. Um, and they had about 5,000 people watch that as well. So, um, and that happened on the same day, you know, so it's just like, I think I got up at six o'clock in the morning and then went to bed about two o'clock in the morning the following day and just kind of running on adrenaline the whole time. And, the, you know, you're walking around and bumping into like Judy Dench and um, Tim Minchin and Ian McKellen, you know, all just kind of hanging about the place because they were all in the show. So, no, it was it was properly properly incredible. And like fifty five thousand people in Stratford that day, you know, um, that's was more people than Stratford could really could really cope <laughs> with in one day. But it was yeah, it was special. Yeah, fantastic. I was going to ask you what famous people you met, but uh, yeah, yeah. 
No, I mean, lots of famous people really that day. They were just all over the place. You sort of kept, kept bumping into them, you know. And um, and that everyone, I think the thing about Stratford is, is that because those the people that were in Stratford that day that are famous, are, 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 you know, they, they're all people that sort of began their careers or started their careers off at yeah. the Royal Shakespeare Company and then have gone on to other things. And they sort of have this long-time association with with Stratford and, you know, would have lived in Stratford when they were appearing in the productions. And so I think coming back, they all just feel like they're at home. They're just sort of yeah. hanging out. You know, I remember walking past um, the corner of um, Chapel Lane and um, Waterside and literally Ian McKellen and Tim Minchin just sat on a wall having a chat, you know, <laughs> <laughs> with each other. Um, right, like And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like that all day, really. <laughs> <laughs> the other great one was I wasn't there. The other great thing that happened was when uh, when Benedict Cumberbatch arrived. There was a lot of a lot of fans waiting to see Benedict Cumberbatch arrive and like walk in through stage door. <laughs> so, Brilliant. but the the, the um, uh, Ian McKellen and uh, Tim Minsk, uh, I can't say that was sat there going, "Look, there's Louisa Davis Foley walking past." <laughs> <laughs> so, well, it's, that was a lovely idea. I'm not yeah. sure about that. <laughs> the other thing we did that day that was kind of cool. Oh, you're still there. I may have lost you there. Are you back? Yeah. Somebody no, I was going to say. Telephone. Somebody decided to telephone me in the middle of the conversation. Oh, yeah. wow. Well, that's the, that's, that's the uh, I suppose that's one of the things that can happen with this kind of uh, form of comms. Oh, I was going to uh, say. Yes, uh, the, the, a delivery's just arrived, making a massive noise. And then. <laughs> Yesterday we were doing a thing for this asparagus thing, and this guy, they put a polit the local copper turned up to to say, "How are you doing? Is everything all right?" And like started talking loudly over a piece and stuff, and <laughs> and dustbin men arrived. You know, you didn't get that on the twenty third of April, did you? You know, no, no. I mean, we did have a lot of road closures to contend with. You know, right. we had a lot of road closures. We had a huge amount of people. The, the logistics of it all, you know, were the subject of months and months of meetings. Yeah. Um, the other thing we did that not that day was we had a vigil at um, Shakespeare's grave at midnight um, oh, wow. after the show, and about three thousand people queued up to visit his grave. Um, that was quite incredible. And there was the church was all full of um, of candles, and they had the choir yeah. in there and everything. I mean, it's just like we were all completely knackered, but it was just yeah, it was gorgeous. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. Thank you for telling us about that. I just. You know, you um, just um, sort of quickly, just could we just give us because you know, you've got a lot of experience and um, knowledge and expertise in um, performance arts over the over your career. Yeah. And I just given this present situation, what your briefly what your view view might be of what how it's going to be or what the issues might be. Yeah, I think I think it's really hard um, at this point to to predict. I think that there there will come a time where. Um, and I think it will be very gradual, but I think there will come a there will come a time where people feel they need to come back together again and be together again, um, yeah. and obviously feeling safe and feeling um, that they're not at risk or they're not putting anybody else at risk is going to be a really kind of key factor. Um, I think it's really good to see like the efforts that um, the cultural sector are making around the country to be on the front foot with all of that stuff. So in the West Midlands, there's a thing called the West Midlands Culture Response Unit. And that's um, a group of um, cultural organisations. It's open to everybody. They have a Facebook group. So anyone who's involved with running cultural activity or arts activity can join that group. Right. Um, and that's about thinking about what do we know about our audiences? How can we communicate? How can we sustain? How can we keep things going? And how can we think about what's needed in the short term, what's needed in the midterm, and what's the aspirations in the long term, you know? Um, so it, it does feel like we've got to think about what the recovery is. Yeah, yeah. And plan for that and and then um, great seeing what the arts council are doing they're you know putting a lot of funding towards supporting individual artists and organizations um and just trying to I, at the moment i've just said to people look if anyone's planning on applying for that funding and they need some help just to give me a shout because i've got the experience of raising money from the arts council and happy to help people really happy to read things and try and support people's people's um of fundraising attempts because a lot of people have been the benefits have benefited from public funding but haven't directly had to apply for it themselves in the past right. so just kind of navigating that process is is, is um yeah it's, it's can be interesting for people 
<laughs> okay. So um probably gonna leave it there if that's all right. But uh, that's I, fine, yeah. Um I um you're you're a, a fine singer and fiddler and I look forward to you coming along and playing a tune and singing a song for us at the fleece. Oh, I look forward to that <laughs> immensely. <laughs> I've got some new tunes as well. I've been having fiddle lessons with a guy in um a uh, fiddle player called Danny Diamond who lives in Minnesota. He's Irish, but he lives in Minnesota with his with his girlfriend. And um, I've been having lessons with him, so I've been learning oh. some great new tunes that I'll have to come and play. And the other thing we have been thinking, actually, is can we have pizza tonight, yeah, <laughs> please? Yeah. No. Can we put in an order? Yeah. <laughs> but I'll send that into Tash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> OK. Thanks, Louise. Thanks very much. No yeah. worries. Take care. Yeah. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Here's the amazing fireworks from 2016 that Lou was involved in. And good night and goodbye from all of us at Fleece TV. Hope to see you at the virtual pub later.